My name is Phil. I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I have a lot of initials behind my name because I'm a total nerd, geek, love research, love going to school, love teaching, doing all this. And you'll hear my story of how I got to this point, um, which is basic. I'm really happy to be here, just quite honestly. I literally, not just here, but in this world after what I've gone through with aplastic anemia. Luckily, I have uh, been a director of research for a company that makes stretchy rubber bands. Uh, they're called TheraBands. You may have heard of them. Uh, that's our, our company. I've been doing that for 20 years. I'm a physical therapist, athletic trainer, strength and conditioning specialist, exercise physiologist, and a PhD in kinesiology. Kinesiology is just a study of human movement. So uh, obviously, I'm all about exercise and how people move and, and rehab and things like that. So. Uh, being a, a patient uh, and a caregiver at the same time was quite interesting. Uh, you see it from both sides of the fence. Um, but I was really interested to be involved here because of the, um, the goal of this. With PCORI and what Greg was saying, I've been following PCORI since they started as a, as a clinical researcher uh, and really interested in kind of the same things that PCORI has done. Um, what I've seen clinically in practice is exactly what PCORI is looking at, is you know, for clinicians, the outcomes, the effectiveness of the treatment are, are great, but I realize that patients have different goals and also that different treatments work differently in different patients. So the next big step in research is actually all about how do you match up the right patient with the right treatment? Because there's so many different treatments out there, we don't know that there are certain characteristics of some patients that would fit better with certain treatments. So that's what this is, you know, a great part of, of being uh, involved in this. But the other big thing is, being, is how we learn about how people become more involved in clinical trials, okay? That's the hardest part of being a clinical researcher. Greg said, you know, it takes forever for research to go on. And that's exactly right. It's, it's a very lengthy process and um, we'll talk about why that is. You'll see all the steps that it takes to get to that point. But the hardest part is patient recruitment and retention. That's the hardest part. And what we're trying to do here with you guys is to help us understand better what does it take to get patients into these clinical trials and what does it get to keep them in these clinical trials, okay? Now, as I said, this is not, this, I know it's Saturday morning, um, it's, and it's all about research. It's really not gonna be boring, I promise you. I work really hard to do this. I actually teach clinicians about research. Um, which is, it's, it's very difficult. Clinicians really don't understand research either. I just happen to be really geeky about it and knowledgeable. Uh, so I like to share that information in a good way that you can actually understand. But again, if, if I go too far, please ask questions. I'm here for you guys. You know, I'm here for, for this lecture. I'll be here uh, for most of the day. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. That's what we're here for. As I said, I'm not just a research director, I'm also a survivor of aplastic anemia. So I was in an NIH clinical trial. So my story was uh, 20, 20, 2014, I believe it was, January 2nd or so, and I was feeling very tired and uh, didn't know why and couldn't walk down the driveway and uh, called my cardiologist saying, oh my gosh, you know, something wrong with my heart. And he says, come on in and we'll take a look at all the tests. Uh, next day, blood work, he goes, well, buddy, your heart's okay, but I got bad news. He says, try lineage, all of your, your uh, cell counts are down. You have pancytopenia. Okay, what, what is that? Uh, your red cells, white cells, platelets, all critically low. Oh, okay. Yeah, you need to go to the hospital right now. This was a Tuesday at 4.30 in the afternoon when he called me. My wife's at work, my kids are, you know, coming back from school. So she immediately comes back home. We go to the ER. Um, a friend of mine was the ER doc. He goes, you know, and he's, he's very blunt, you know you probably have leukemia. I'm like, okay, thanks doc, I appreciate that. We'll see what it is. And then that night, um, admitted to 
a hospital for a transfusion and, a, and an emergency bone marrow biopsy. I have no, reason, no idea why they had to take a bone marrow that night, uh, but they did and, and it didn't, didn't go so well, so I had to have another one. And I just finished my eighth one um, last month or two. But anyway, I, I was, you know, obviously looking for options. Baton Rouge is not the best place to have um, aplastic anemia. We need to be cancer centers like MD Anderson, Johns Hopkins, NIH, the places that are doing the research. That's where if you have a, a disease, it's always say you go to a teaching hospital or research hospital. So luckily being a researcher, I was just tooling around and you know, the internet's a great thing nowadays and it's a good thing and a bad thing. Luckily, I knew about clinicaltrials.gov as a researcher, so I just went there and sure enough, NIH has a uh, clinical trial for severe aplastic anemia, looking at the administration of l as a first-line treatment, because l obviously, if you know, was a, uh, um, a salvage medication that they were putting in patients because they saw that it increased platelet lineage with also uh, some other, some of the reds and whites also went up as well. So they, uh, Dr. Townsley, Dr. Neil Young uh, were my physicians, and I was admitted immediately. Uh, when, when the research nurse uh, went there, uh, looked at my count, says, you have to get on a plane now and come here immediately. I said, was it that bad? But it's, you know, there's aplastic anemia, then there's severe aplastic anemia. That's what I had. Um, so I went in and got the horse ATG. Um, I don't know if how many of, of you aplastic anemia family supporters or survivors? So, okay. So ATG, four days. Um, they call it shake and bake. When you're done, uh, your, your temperature goes up to 104, but you feel cold and you, you can't stop shaking. Um, and then we started the L-Tromba PAG uh, as part of this, this trial. Um, but uh, this is a picture of me uh, after or right before my, my treatment. You know, got my transfusions ready to go, had the ATG. There were a few side effects, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I made it through it, though. I mean, there were a few side effects besides the shake and bake. But the funny thing was, <laughs> I like to kid around a lot. And um, so I had, I had ordered this, uh, and I planned to, to really freak out um, uh, my staff there. Uh, so. I had a great nurse practitioner who was working with me. And I told her, they would make grand rounds every Thursday morning, so the whole staff would come in. And I said, okay, after the ATG, I, I made it, I survived. I said, I wanna play a little trick. So, you know, they, they pull the curtain around there like that, and they're doing grand rounds, and, <laughs> and she's standing outside the door, and I can hear her saying, uh, Mr. Page is a 40, whatever I was, year old man, severe day plus anemia, status post, horse ATG, cyclosporin, blah, 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 blah. Uh, unfortunately, last night there were a few side effects. And the whole group walks in and she pulls the curtain back, and that was me. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what, they got a laugh out of that, all with their masks on and everything. <laughs> well, that, that wasn't the end of my story, unfortunately, uh, as happens with this is I developed sepsis the day that I left NIH. Um, uh, the good news was that even though I was in the hospital for two months, uh, luckily what happened to me was after the, the horse ATG, um, my whites weren't coming back as well as they had hoped. Um, they had started the L-Tromba PAG and um, I, it, was, it was Mardi Gras. I had to be home for Mardi Gras. Um, but not, not because I actually go to Mardi Gras, but I need to get home because if I don't, everyone's gonna be on the plane, I'm never gonna get home and blah, blah, blah. So I kind of forced them to let me go early, which was a mistake. Dr. Townsley said, it's not a matter of when you get an infection, or if you get an infection, it's when you get an infection. And literally the day that I left NIH, I developed sepsis. That I had to go back into the hospital the next morning. I flew home from here out of Dulles and Landed, it felt like crap the whole night and, and went next morning, took my temperature, 102, go to the ER in Baton Rouge. I was in the ER in Baton Rouge for 10 days. I mean, the, um, the hospital for 10 days. They couldn't, fi they couldn't fix me. It, the infection was just rampant. It, they couldn't figure it out. So uh, luckily, the NIH, um, they said, come back here. We'll take care of it. So they flew me back up on a... Uh, uh, medevac jet, and 
Um, I had white blood cell transfusions, which are rare and difficult to get, but um, obviously NIH was able to do it. And so what's great about those is the, you know, the, there, are, there are donors that are just on standby uh, here in, in the D.C. area that you have to match all these things. And they'll call you and they'll say, I've got a person that needs a white blood cell. Uh, and then they'd, they'd, they'd come in and get Neupogen shots and uh, then get the extraction and then they spin them down and then give them to me. So then two of those, it took care of the infection, finally got the, the doctors to figure out what it was. Um, so uh, my last transfusion uh, was almost two years ago, very lucky for that. Uh, almost normal counts. I have not been on medications for a long time. Um, the Eltrombopag series ended, uh, actually had a reaction to the Eltrombopag, one of the two that got a big skin rash that they didn't know what it was. That's part of the problem. I mean, when you're starting, they, you know, they may have given Eltrombopag, but who knew that when you gave it with the cyclosporin and with the ATG, what would happen? And I was unfortunately one of the ones, but having a rash wasn't a, a big deal. So this was the study that actually came out. I don't know if any of you have seen this. This obviously makes big news in aplastic anemia. This was the study that I was part of. So as a patient, it's really cool to go through the study and then see it in print, okay? Now, for those of you who may be patients or, uh, you know, you don't necessarily want to read through all this or understand it all, um, uh, I'll, I'm going to hopefully walk you through some of the steps today that will help you to do a better job to understand what's involved in a research article, but also a research proposal. So this was just published, and it, and it was a, as part of this study, we now know that Eltrombopag is effective first-line treatment. I believe it was a 96% success rate, uh, and 10 years ago it was a 10% success rate in aplastic anemia. So what we're doing at NIH, um, I say we, <laughs> and what they're doing at NIH, I feel like part of it. Um, so another funny uh, you know, story about, about that was being a physical therapist is I, had, I, I obviously knew the importance of exercise, and no one ever really said, you need to exercise. It's more about you know, saving your life. So one of my um, things that I always did was I got up and walked around the whole NIH clinical center. And if you walk around like four times, it's a mile. And I would do that uh, every day, three times a day. And then I had my TheraBands. So I was exercising with my TheraBands. And there's, the, there's no research on the effects of exercise with these types of treatments. So that's kind of my next wish, wish list, bucket list of research is how can we help these patients to not just get their counts back, but I think that uh, resistance training, for example, it, it effectively works on your immune system. And so I would pull a little, pull a little trick. Um, Dr. Townsley would always argue with me, oh, strength training doesn't improve your white cell count. Nothing's going to do that but medication. And I said, well, I'm going to do something. I said, well, why don't you let me uh, uh, come in, do a blood draw, which is great because you have a, a port, you know, or actually in my case it was um, the pick line. And they'll, they'll draw it. And so uh, they would run the, 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 the numbers before and after I did weight training. And they, the white cell counts would go up. It was amazing. Um, but that deserves not an N of one, just me, doesn't mean that it does anything. Um, but that's my next big, big uh, hope that we were able to do that. So, again, I have both sides of the fence here as a, as a clinician, as a researcher, and as a patient. Uh, hopefully, I'll offer that perspective to kind of help you understand um, both sides of the fence. So, our goals for today as we go through, obviously, become familiar with the technology, the research, uh, the clinical research terminology. And that's kind of the, the first hurdle to get through. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot of different big words that are used, like meta-analysis and those types of things. Hopefully, I'll be able to, to clear some of that up. Uh, learn and, and uh, how to read it and understand a proposal. That's another hard part. Um, just for me, little hints, I, I'm kind of a little bit ADD, so I can't get through the whole thing one time. Um, I usually end up stopping and then doing something else and coming back to it. It's kind of my, my hint of, of trying to read a research proposal because it gets pretty bad. Um, and then provide meaningful input uh, for you guys to be able to put input into these proposals for the researchers, particularly related to um, patient-related outcomes, what's important to the patient, and also to get them uh, recruited and retained in the study. Again, those are the important parts.